The king shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks. When beauty gilds the eastern hills and life to joy awakes. Not as of old a little child to bear and fight and die, but crowned with glory like the sun that lights the morning sky. The king shall come when morning dawns and earth's dark night is past. Oh, haste the rising of that morn, the day that I shall last. And let the endless bliss begin by weary saints foretold. When right shall triumph over wrong, and truth shall be extolled. Oh, timeless words, timeless words put to a very pleasant little tune. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this brand new day the Lord has blessed us with, December 14. December 14. Wow. Coming to the great cel celebration of our dear Jesus' birth. And everyone is hustling and bustling. It always amazes me. Uh, sinners, people who don't profess to be a Christian, they hustle and bustle and buy presents and and celebrate however they celebrate, even if it's just themselves. At least they gave. They gave to people. They gave to someone. Um, it's all good. People at different stages in their walk with the Lord, some not walking at all, some just starting out, some who have walked a long time, and we still have a long way to go, don't we? So on this December 14th, it is very exciting. We are beginning to read the book of Jonah. Woohoo! Jonah. And it's a one-day read. Would you believe that? Okay. Jonah, dove of God. Dove of God. One little hot sip. Okay. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Really? Where can you go to, from the presence of the Lord? He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, and he went down into it and to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. And then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots. 
and the lot fell on Jonah. Hmm. I think the Lord had a hand in that lot, don't you? And then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. God's hand saying, I'm going to have my will, right? And therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O oh Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O oh Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and they threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. I bet there was a moment of silence over that one, don't you? And then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I've often tried to think that through, what that would be like. How about you? And we move along to chapter two of Jonah. And then God has pressed down. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me, out of the belly of Sheol I cried. And you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas. And the floods surrounded me, all your billows and your waves passed over me. And then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Oh, that's what the Jews do. I don't care where they are on earth. When they go to pray, they turn towards the direction of the temple. I've been on many an Israeli plane, and they all get up and face the way of the temple. It's amazing to see. The waters surrounded me even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. What a terrible time. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit. Oh, Lord, my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. 
Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. And there's a good line. Have you paid what you vowed? Have you even vowed anything? Do you even go? All good questions. Salvation is of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Oh, I want to see the replay of that in heaven someday, don't you? The fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. And we move along to chapter 3. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. And then he cried out and he said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. And then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? And then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. And we move along to chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore, now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And then the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. And there he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade that he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. 
So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm. A little worm. And it so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. And then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than to live. And then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock. And we are left right there. That's it. Tomorrow we will read Mika. We would say Micah. The Jews say Mika. Tomorrow. Come back. It will be awesome. Sweet, sweet prophet with a great message. We move right along and we are enjoying the last book of the New Covenant, the New Testament, Revelation. And today we will read chapter 5. How are y'all doing out there? You doing okay? <laughs> Always sweet to see your names. There's Connie writing out all that we're reading. And there's Melissa with uh, all the graphics and Kathy's done them. And people are greeting and it's wonderful, isn't it? It's just a little morning fellowship with the Lord and his word and each other on this basis. And um, I, some names are missing. I'm wondering if people are okay. I'm going to try to check on those that I know how I can get to them. All right, anybody seen Maria's name? I feel like I'm missing her. Revelation chapter five. And I saw the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much, John says, because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain. 
Scripture says, slain from the foundation of the world. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. And then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Isn't that a marvelous thing to know? And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. R-E-I-G-N, reign, rule. And then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Innumerable. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And I kind of said that in the way that we hear it in the fabulous Messiah. Imagine that. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, <clears throat> I heard saying, and here is the quote, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Makes me want to cry. And the four living creatures said, Amen. We would say, Amen. Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. And Lord, we worship you. We worship you today. We thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. We thank you for another chance to gather, to hear the word of God, to encourage one another to, to pray for people that are on our hearts, to pray for their healing, for their salvation, for their comfort. Lord, we lift up Mel and Nina, and Mel has put on a picture of his precious eldest grandson who was killed in an accident, Elijah. He was 23, 
and we pray and we grieve with them. What a hard time. We move right along to Psalm 133, <clears throat> another song of ascents of David. And this part has a lovely tune too, but I'm going to just read. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And wow, we can apply that to all of us who gather here for this little reading here. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore, eternal life. It is worth serving the Lord. It is worth repenting of your sins and asking him, to wash you clean by his precious blood. Ask him to come into your heart, to be your Lord and be your Savior, and then put your nose in this word of God and learn it and walk it and walk after righteousness in the footprints of Jesus. The rewards are great. And the greatest is eternal life. To live in heaven with him and all the saints of old. From all the ages we read, thousands and thousands. Please, if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, don't put it off. Let that be your true Christmas. Let that be the trueness of what Christmas is. Jesus, the Christ, born humbly, lowly, in a stable. Precious Mary, riding along on a donkey, suffering birth pangs, giving birth. Precious Joseph, walking along, called an angel was sent to speak to both of them and tell them what to do. And they obeyed and they did it. So it lets you and me obey. We wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 29, verses 26 and 27. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. The justice on this earth, true justice comes from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous. And he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Big dividing line, right? Between evil and good. Righteousness. Let's wrap it up with prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for the brand new day, brand new chance to serve you, worship you, brand new chance to do a good job if you, if you work, to do a better job than ever, to bring joy to others, to prepare, to go to church, to sing, to praise the Lord, to worship him to bless the pastor and family, to help those, to help that the church would be an open door, well equipped with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit for those who come and that whatever they need, they would find there, whether it's spiritual or material. Precious Lord, help us to care for the body of Christ, the church. Help us, Lord. Help us to be 
good members in good standing with you, Lord. Help us to return. Help us to forgive. Help us to bring joy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem. We hold up Israel at this time of war. Precious Lord, please, we'd ask that you would have your perfect will and way and that your right hand of perfection, uh, of salvation, your right hand of protection would be upon the IDF, on, the, on all of the commanders and those who are calling the war shots. And Lord, it appears you have told them to go after the enemy and clean them up because that's what they're doing. And Lord, I would ask, I would ask that you would shut the mouths of rulers, so-called, in America who have. They are trying to tell Israel what to do. I'll just say that. Without being there, without suffering anything. Lord, I'd ask that you would cause everybody else to keep their nose out of it and to pray. Let us pray for them, all of them. Lord, let us pray that Israel gets a hold of it and that they are victorious. And Lord, I pray for everyone that would be called an enemy. And Lord, I ask if any of them would repent and come to you, what a great victory that would be, that their souls would be saved. Precious Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we lift up Mel and Nina. We lift up this precious family, the parents of Elijah, who has now gone on with you. Lord Jesus, we pray that Holy Spirit would come and comfort as only he can. Only he can bring comfort. Only he can help them to even want to get up on a new day. Precious Lord, please be with that mother and that father and his young brother, eight years old, who's very hard to lose the only other sibling, his older brother. Father God, please help them all. Lord, we pray for Bibi Netanyahu and the Knesset and all those who are in charge over there in Israel. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would give them wisdom all that we just read, power, might, wisdom, help, help from you, Lord. Show them your will and your way. And Father God, we hold up America, and we'd ask, Lord, that all lies, all deceit, all fraud would be openly revealed. It's like a cloud hanging over America. And Lord, I'd ask, going clear back to the elections and to all other situations, let truth be proclaimed in the streets. Let truth ar arise and let those who know truth, let them risk telling it and bringing it forward. Protect them, precious God, please. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would bring a blessing upon every believer in the world to celebrate once again and to have the joy of the Lord in their hearts to celebrate his birth, to celebrate the story of his coming for us and to be interested to get into the word of God on a daily basis. Father God, there are many prayers being prayed by people who are here, some have put their names down, some don't, and that's fine. You can do as you please. But Lord, you hear the thoughts 
You know their minds. You hear the needs. You hear their prayers. And so we know, Lord, that you will be Lord over them and all of that and bring answers. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, all of God's people cried a hearty amen and went about determined to have a good and worshipful day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Bye-bye.